Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us uh, today and gracing the occasion. We were having a panel discussion on uh, on uh, improving preventive, uh, preventing non-communicable diseases. As you are aware, sir, that uh, we have a huge burden of non-communicable disease. We have a burden of uh, almost 100 million people having diabetes in the country and uh, even bigger number of people having pre-diabetes and also hypertension, uh, obesity and other cardiovascular disease are very prevalent in our population. So we are discussing about what should be the strategies for, for preventing this while we are addressing treatment aspects but we, are, we realize that prevention is the important aspect towards uh, improving, uh, imp uh, preventing, uh, improving the uh, health of our population. We, Madam uh, uh, Emlata Garu, who is the uh, director of NIN, also t uh, told us about the uh, new nutritional guidance which have been released very recently on uh, you know, for for improving the I mean uh, which are healthy which uh, want to um, uh, which are looking at uh, aiming towards uh, uh, inculcating healthy eating habits in the population and we also had a lot of discussion from all the other uh, members of this panel who spoke about various aspects about prevention and we also realized that technology is an important aspect which has to be uh, harnessed towards uh, spreading the awareness about uh, healthy habits to, to the population so that we can you know go towards preventing these problems so we would like to uh, have your views on a few uh, points from you on what should be uh, i mean how we can go ahead with uh, using technology towards these aspects I think uh, one of the most important aspects of uh, today's conversation has been the doctor of the future will give no medicine but will instruct his patient in the care of human frame, in diet and the care and prevention of disease. So it is more about how we prevent through good nutrition, proper nutrition, so that we don't have disease first of all. We have a very eminent personality amongst us today, Sri Sridhar Bhavgaru. I know him since my school days. We had a very, very long association. He used to study law in uh, Jana Lehru University when I used to be in school in uh, Vishakhapatnam and he used to often visit uh, Vizag and uh, we have a very long relationship that uh, he also belongs to the same, uh, he is our MLA from the same constituency where we also come from the Manthani constituency of uh, Telangana and uh, just want to let you know the very erudite, very educated, energetic, very very empathetic towards many many things that are happening around us, ethical and is a great enabler and that's the reason why he is in this position of industry, commerce, IT and so many other things, legislative affairs because he is an enabler. So on behalf of the IDEA clinics and this workshop, a big round of applause and welcome to the Honorable Minister Sridhar Babuji. So I just want to put very quickly uh, some stats that according to the National Family Health Survey data in the state of Telangana, on an average we have 21% of all our adult men who are diabetic and 18% of all women who are above the age of 15 who are diabetic. Hypertension is a bigger burden where 36% of our men who are above the age of 15 who are hypertensive and 29% of women above the age of 15 are hypertensive. So if you do a small uh, uh, you know, subset of people who have both these hypertension and uh, the larger union set, it will be around 30% of all the population is uh, having either hypertension or diabetes or both of them. So that's the big chunk of population that NCD care has to address. Having said that, there is a very big national program called the NCPCDS program, National Control for Prevention of Communicable Disease, Non-Communicable Diseases. On an annum, the government of India through the National Health Mission is sanctioning around 2,000 crore rupees for this program for all over India. I mean, which is probably such a minuscule that probably to Telangana we might get around 100 crores every year for prevention of non-communicable diseases. The National Health Policy has been created in 2017, but it is time for Telangana to have a state health policy. 
and I think it is a very, very apt time that under the able new leadership, we have a state health policy for the state of Telangana. For the country like India, we have states which are on extreme like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, where the C-section rates are around 2%, 3%, 4%. And in districts like Karimnagar, where the C-section rates are 70 80%. So there's a huge difference between the states. And even in the state of Telangana, difference between Utnur and Hyderabad. So we require a very, very state-centric Telangana state policy. Another big, big problem that we are facing in the state of Telangana is rampant alcoholism. 43% of our people are alcoholic, so it's a, which is a very big problem. Now, if you look at the projections for the urban Telangana, it is much higher in all these things. The alcohol, hypertension, diabetes, and all of this. And the National Program for Control of Di Di um, Non-Communicable Diseases, 100 crore of rupees every year, and the state is giving around 25 crores for the prevention. But we are spending a huge chunk of money from the treasuries on treatment. For example, for treatment of dialysis, for treatment of CABG, bypass surgery, stents. On an average, the government spends, like in Telangana, 600 crores every year for these procedures. But we are spending not more than 100 crores for prevention. And out of these 100 crores, 80 crores of the money goes for salaries. So we are not able to spend more on treatment. So I think there is a huge opportunity where we can prevent the bypass surgeries, stents, dialysis to happen. The government can invest a little bit more in prevention. And because you are at the helm of the FS for the industry and, income, uh, and information technology, and you have so many E's, and one of the E's is enabler, and I think if health and technology can come together, and we can, and Professor Sarang is here from ISB, if the behavior can be changed in the larger population through influence, through technology. The uh, Johns Hopkins study says that a person cannot, will not come for treatment if he is advised that you have to take a tablet or a pill for not more than six months. So he needs a push, a nudge, and sometimes a shove, even from his relatives, from his neighbors, from his friends. So this communication strategy has to be designed by something like we have in the police, uh, on the 20th floor of the new police uh, building that we have. Something like that, a very, very upscale, upfront, a very modern and futuristic non-communicable disease prevention. La, that kind of a health promotion setup, where we can prevent because India cannot afford, or Telangana cannot afford, thousands of crores of investments into treatment. I think by next year, we will, we will cross the need of around 1,200 crores of rupees for just bypass and stents and dialysis. So if we can invest 15 or 20 percent of that money in prevention, and especially if through policies, like for example, the industrial policy says that every industry which has a certain number of employees must have a, a crash or a mother's place. Similarly, if we can have an NCD clinic in every, in every of the industrial networks. So these sort of things uh, can be nudged by the policy reforms that we can bring uh, through you. Uh, so this is, uh, these are some of the things. And I would request Professor Sahai to kindly, uh, you know, the panel can uh, speak a couple of other suggestions from our side. And then I think Honorable Minister will uh, yeah, take the floor. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you, you, very much. Thank you, Dr. Santosh, for giving that uh, very beautiful insight. I would now request all the panel members to give one or two comments so that uh, you know, we can uh, apprise the, the minister of the, of the scenario, and, and uh, then we can uh, ha have him give his comments. So Dr. Samba Sivaya, uh, can you just give us a few insights onto the NCD burden, the burden of cancer? and uh, what are the aspects of prevention that you would like to say? Very briefly, if you can tell us. Unfortunately, the cancer in India is rising. All over the globe, it is rising. In, uh, in India, it's rising. In uh, Telangana, in the south of, in southern states, it's rising uh, in both uh, uh, urban and rural areas. And uh, especially the screening for women, the uterine cervical cancer, 
and then the breast cancer mammogram. These two are very potent tools available, easily available, can be implemented <coughs> if for uh, screening uh, in, uh, uh, in the healthcare system. And for men and women, stool occult blood and also colonoscopy, colonoscopy once in a decade. So none of us probably, maybe one or two percent of the, uh, the people who are assembled here might have got through, uh, uh, got done some uh, screening colonoscopy. So uh, it's such a, uh, uh, you know, minimal penetration. Uh, so these two things, uh, the pap smear and then the mammogram and a colonoscopy, these three things will at least detect uh, uh, approved uh, screening mechanisms and these are easily available at district level hospitals and even uh, mandal level uh, uh, these things also can be implemented. Thank the, you. The, the, the embracing of these uh, things is very poor. So the individuals, the, uh, the persons should be enlightened and uh, they should take responsibility of their health and they should, uh, uh, and they, they should have uh, 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 this time and uh, motivation to go to these clinics and then, uh, uh, you know, you. Uh, take care of their health. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. You have actually highlighted the importance of simple screening tools like screening uh, for cancer, uh, cervical cancer, screening for… So, uh, these images, uh -huh. these images can be tele, fo, tele uh, kind of uh, uh, transported. So and from district levels to transport it to Hyderabad city somewhere and uh, a pathologist or radiologist can absolutely. go through the, uh, these things and uh, give a, a diagnosis. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have highlighted the importance of technology in terms of, you know, spreading the awareness in the rural population at, to the last mile we can reach and uh, see that all these screening uh, procedures are done. Uh, I would now uh, move on to uh, Dr. Hemlata Garu who will tell us a little about, you know, the message she wants to give uh, about uh, the unhealthy eating habits and how they contribute towards non-communicable disease and what can be done towards that. Just a so brief just comment. I was discussing about how 56.4% of the disease burden that we see in India. Disease burden means it includes everything, complication of diabetes, diabetes itself, cardiovascular disease and many other non-communicable diseases. Disease burden, 56.4% has, has been found to be contributed by unhealthy dietary habits and even air pollution and uh, alcohol consumption and other uh, risk factors are coming later than that. So uh, our dietary guidelines so give evidence-based recommendations uh, to follow how much foods to be taken, how what foods to be taken in what quantities to prevent to promote health and also to prevent non-communicable disease that I was just mentioning. It empowers and encourages people and ad to adhere to this healthy dietary habits to, uh, for uh, improving their own health. And uh, if, you, if an individual adheres to dietary, healthy dietary habits, in a way it will also be uh, embraced by the culture. And in that way, not only the present generation, across generations also, it has a potential to impact. Over a period of time, healthy dietary habits can be. But for this, I mean, accessibility, affordability, availability of healthy foods is must. And governments uh, have to contribute to making healthy foods available, accessible, and affordable across the communities, across different sections. So we'll now move to Dr. Uh, Mr. Vikram and take his. He's the co-founder of Nephroplus, which is a chain of dialysis centers across the country. And he will just give us a, his message about you know, what should be done towards prevention of non-communicable disease? Yeah, I'm just talking from the private sector perspective. I think if you are expecting private sector to do for the greater good of the society, it's not going to happen. Uh, I think the government has a big role to play to convene all the stakeholders, as has been spoken about, understand the vested interest of each of the stakeholder, figure out what are the carrots and sticks that the government can provide in in terms of um, eliciting the right behavior from the each stakeholder. On top of that, creating awareness. I think we are all, we came to know today that a lot of people are not aware of what constitutes healthy diet and what constitutes bad diet. I think no other stakeholder other than the government is in the best position to, uh, to communicate at scale to all the masses and also make sure that uh, eliciting of the right behavior from each of the stakeholder, including the private sector. Private sector will not do anything for the greater good of the society. It has to be mandated from a regulation perspective by the government authorities to elicit the behavior that the government wants us to do. 
Thank you, sir. I will now uh, move to Professor uh, Sarang Deo, who's a uh, who's a professor at the Indian S School of Business, and he is he is, he is going to tell us about you know how to bring about behavioral change because ultimately we are seeing that you know we can prevent disease by bringing about a change in behavior. The 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 things that need to be followed are very simple: a healthy diet and and uh, increasing physical activity. But doing that requires a lot of behavioral change, and he's he'll give us a few insights about that. So, uh, thank you, Honorable Minister, for being here. Um, I know health is not your portfolio, but domain, a portfolio, but I think there are two direct connections uh, that your portfolio can make to health. One of them is information technology. Um, we've been talking about non-communicable diseases. These diseases don't get cured in days or weeks. So, you have patients who live long, generate a lot of data, and that data can be useful in managing their health. Right? So, so this is where good new software products, technology products can play a role. But we increasingly see that there is a gulf between those who make these products and those who consume these products on the healthcare side. So I wonder if there is a way by which two ministries could come together and create an environment where you create meaningful products create uh, sandboxes to test these products, their efficacies, etc. So that's where health and IT could come together. I think that will be really useful. And the second, which uh, Santosh briefly uh, talked about, I'll emphasize, which is the industries and commerce. Um, in this uh, sector, health has an impact on industrial productivity. And I think that's a case to be made that people who have diabetes, who have hypertension, who have complications arising from those diseases, bring down the productivity of the state. And so what is the role that the employers, workplaces could play in keeping these people healthy? What kind of incentives, carrots, sticks we could provide? So those are two very sort of concrete things I find uh, where you could act as an enabler in conjunction with other ministries, but uh, more active role. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sangdev. I'll j quickly ask Dr. Sham to give us an a overview of, uh, you know, a recap of what Idea Clinics has been doing and uh, okay, I'm the final and the one. vision of the, Idea Clinics before uh, we ask the so minister. So I'm one of the founders of Idea Clinics, and uh, we are grateful that the IT minister agreed because nowadays everything is technology, and my question is completely different. We are looking at health economics. India, we are full of professionals, and uh, how can healthcare industry add to the GDP of the country? So. Sir is trying hard to get a lot of industries to Hyderabad. Uh, I saw recently Medronic and all that stuff. The missed opportunity is the huge potential for medical tourism with the advent of technology. If you see uh, the biggest doctor community in US, UK, they are Indians. This is how uh, the healthcare system in Western society, they are uh, struggling to survive. They are dependent on the options they have is to immigrate all Indian doctors to their country. So I think as IT minister, if we can take some initiative, uh, help spread the word that there is such a potential for medical tourism, remote care uh, with advent of technology. I think it can add to alongside what pharma industry has done, what uh, IT industry has done. I think it's time that we take that initiative and I'm sure we can become a global player for healthcare for the world. Thank you.